Hello, my name's Mel and this is my self-converted Mercedes Sprinter camper van. And when I say self-converted, I mean I converted it all by myself. Let's take a look around. Now before I show you inside the van, allow me to show you around the outside of the van first. Now throughout this van tour I shall be adding information cards up here for your convenience as a reference so that you can come back later and see certain aspects of this van build. So one of the features I like about my Sprinter is the omnidirectional halogen headlights with built-in headlight washers. It's also got, you'll notice, parking sensors which are very useful especially in traffic. So sticking with the outside of my van, the nice, another little added extra that I added myself was this nice wind brake. It allows you to have the window open slightly in the evening to get a nice fresh air breeze going through the van. Now you'll notice I've got these side windows as well. These are quite nice. I made a video all about that. I'll put a link up there. Now coming around to the rear of the van, you'll notice it's quite standard, although it does have these rather nifty security locks. Now on the other side, as you can see, I've also got another one of these side windows that open, and also they have flight nets inside. The door glass, this also opens. I made a video all about this too. I'll also put a link up there to the video I made when I fitted this door glass. Now you may notice on the roof of my van I have a rather large exhaust pipe. It is actually a flue to my wood burning stove. Also on my roof, a solar panel, which gives me plenty of power and charges my 210 amp lead acid batteries. Now one of the reasons I chose this Sprinter is because it's got air con. Well actually that was the main reason I chose this Sprinter, but as a bonus it's also automatic. And not only that, it's got sat nav too. And this is my reversing camera. So whilst we're in the cab, I will show you my modified double front passenger seat. It is a standard seat, but I've cut the back off. And I did this to allow myself access into the living space. And I'll put a video up here to how I cut the back of my passenger seat in half. It's a lot easier than you think, and it does work extremely well. Now behind my thermal curtain, and I've got two of these curtains, and that is to stop the heat from the cab going into the living space. And if I put my hand in there, I can actually feel the air inside the living space is a lot cooler than it is in the cab. So let's go in the living space and have a look around. So here we are inside the living space of my van. As you can see, it's quite spacious as well, which is what I wanted. I didn't want to be enclosed with cupboards coming out and banging my head. So that's why these covers are quite small compared to some other conversions you may have seen online. Now before I show you around I just want to say believe it or not I built this entire van on my own using simple hand tools and I did this to demonstrate you can build a camper van using simple basic household tools. You don't need a great big warehouse with huge band saws or table saws or any of that malarkey. You can use just simple hand saw, a jigsaw, a power screwdriver and a drill and that's all you need. That's all I used to build this entire van and I did that to show and to try and inspire people to build their own camper vans. And I always say keep it simple, keep it safe and you won't go far wrong. So allow me to show you around my van. Let's start with my charging station that I just recently added and I did this purely so I can charge my camera batteries and my metal detecting batteries and at the moment I've got my video light plugged in so it's rather convenient it's worked out really well I'm quite pleased I did that and this is one charging station of many I have another one underneath my pull out table as you can see my phone is plugged in right now that will me to show you so this table is out of my old Volkswagen an old Westphalia so that just simply swivel around and there's the charging station there and it is of course switched so I don't like leaving these things live. There you go. So that's my phone charged on. Now whilst I'm here I'll show you my table. This pulls out, flips over, 
and then I can simply swivel it around like this I'll just move you around and in this position or this position even <laughs> it becomes my work surface for when I'm preparing my evening meal so I can prepare my evening meal and I can cook it there and then when I'm ready to dine I've got my nice little this then becomes a dining area I'll just bring you down there so I've, I've done my meal I've all cooked I can simply sit down slide the table around and enjoy my evening meal and then when I'm finished I can simply put this away and this charging station is conveniently placed so that when I'm lounging in the evening I can lounge here on my phone plugged in no drama no worries of my phone going flat and that's why that charging station is right there also of an evening when I'm in bed it's quite convenient for when I'm in bed as well let's just move that table back round we'll lock it in position and underneath my bed you'll see those doors and the other side of those doors is the storage area for under my bed so I can get to everything without having to go outside and open the back doors that's the theory anyway <laughs> So around the back of my van, underneath my bed, I have a lovely large storage area. I mean, it is quite large. It's the size of the bed after all. And the main thing under here is my nighttime diesel heater fuel tank. Now, I didn't use the standard fuel tank to come with a cheap Chinese diesel heater. I prefer to use this, and I'll put a video up here to why I prefer to use this other than the regular diesel tank. At the back there in the corner, I have my two 110 amp hour lead acid leisure batteries nothing flash just simple lead acid leisure batteries oh and here is my shower which I have yet to install and behind my shower is my porta potty unused hopefully I'll never use it so there's my storage area there's my table here's my seating area now let's go on to the kitchen area and this is my this is where the magic happens <laughs> or not now my sink is simply a mixing bowl with a plug hole put in it and it cost me about £8.50 so I'm really pleased with that. My tap again is simple garden tap and it's brass it does the trick but here's the thing when I turn my water on all you can hear is the sound of running water. You don't hear no water pump that's because there isn't one. I don't use a water pump I actually use <laughs> a repurposed fire extinguisher. I've got two of those, that one's not yet plugged in. This one still has the, a fire extinguisher attachment on it, so if I needed to use this as a fire extinguisher, I can. But when I want to plug it into my tap, I simply undo that. It's got water in it. Damn. And then this plugs into my tap. I'll put that back in there. That wasn't meant to happen. not to worry I've got a towel here on my towel rail I'll we'll just put that there here is a better view of under my sink and my water works I've literally just made a video all about how my water works work I'll put a link to that video up here as you can see there are now two fire extinguishers under the sink this is the spare one and the one at the back is the one in use but the spare one, like I say, it's got this connector still connected, so this could actually be used as a fire extinguisher as it stands, which is a little bit of a bonus. This is my wastewater tank, not very big, because it is a repurposed nighttime diesel heater tank, and I've used that as my wastewater tank. It has a tap at the bottom next to my gas alarm. If that is the gas alarm in view, well, there's my gas alarm down there, because in the locker next door is my actual gas bottle. So yeah, the tap, the tap on my waste bottle is open pretty much all the time, unless I'm in a sensitive area, and then I can close that off and drain it at a later date. So that's my gas alarm there, flashing away as you see. And here is my little tyre pump for putting air pressure into my fire extinguishers. So that is what goes on under the sink. Oh, and this little pipe at the top, this nasty little pipe is my... Um, nighttime pee funnel for emergency uses only I may point out I must point out now under this locker this is where I keep my 
food. Now the reason my gas bottle is down under here is because this is actually a full bottle. It's full of gas and I want to use it up rather than let it go to waste. I thought I'll put the gas bottle there. I'll use this gas bottle up. And once this gas bottle runs out of gas, I'll then put a gas locker at the back of my van under my bed and run some proper copper pipe. But this is just temporarily there purely just to use up the gas that's in that bottle and it is literally a brand new bottle of gas so I wanted to use it up so please don't criticise me for having orange pipe it is literally temporarily just to use that gas bottle up like I say once that's gone I've got a nice big refillable gas bottle that I'm going to put in the back now moving along the next cupboard this is simply just food in these plastic containers to keep it fresh and up here I have some medical supplies. That's pretty much it. And this is all closed up using these little latches. Now my drawers, in here I have more cutlery, cups and stuff. And you'll notice you have to lift them to open them. There's no catches or magnets. It's simply got a block under here which holds them closed. You see they lock into place. And the same as this one. And in here I have my cutlery. I shall create a playlist to this whole kitchen build and I'll put that up there. So here we have my two ring gas hob. This is a domestic hob that's been rejetted so I can use LPG and I've got to say it works absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased with this. The only thing is because it is a domestic hob it um, uses 240 volt for the piezo ignition. But that's not a problem, I just use a lighter when I want to light it, unless of course I can plug in the shore power, in which case then the electronic ignition does actually work. I'll put a link up here to the video of me installing this. Now I have made a little bit of a mistake having my kitchen here because when my curtain is drawn, the curtain tends to lean across the top of the, the uh, burner. So um, I can't use this with my curtains closed. But luckily, some of my viewers suggested I make a lid that lifts up and creates a backsplash. So that's one of my next jobs. But to do that, I need to get rid of this rail. And to get rid of this rail, I need to take everything off. So that's, um, yeah, that's on one of my to-do lists. <laughs> so if you want to see that video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Otherwise, you'll miss that. You don't want to miss that, do you? Oh, and talking about subscribing, please do remember to give this video a thumbs up. It's very, very important. If, if you see anything you like here, then please do give me the thumbs up. It does make a massive difference. Thank you. Now, you'll also notice on the side of my kitchen unit, I have this selection of switches. These first two do my lights. The second one is to turn my fan off. The other two are spare. And the end one turns off my little charging station and this charging station has a voltage meter as well and I think at the moment it's showing 13.5 volts so I'm quite pleased with that it means my leisure batteries are well and truly topped up so let's take a look at the bed have a look at that this bed is so comfortable it's actually topped with an 8 inch thick memory foam mattress and I've got to say it is the most comfortable bed I've ever put in a camper van ever i could sleep in this for a week and a day no problem at all and the nice thing about this is it's actually six foot across as well because i've cut the sides out of my van i didn't cut the sides right out i took the ribs out which allowed me to put less insulation and these windows as well which gives me literally six foot one i think it is across the the length of the bed and i've made a video all about that and i'll put a link up here because i do recommend if you've got a sprinter do the sides like this so you can get a six foot bed going across especially if you've got a medium wheelbase sprinter like this one um, because if you try and put a bed down this way then you're going to take up way too much room and i can sleep in this bed quite comfortably um, usually i end up with my head in that corner and my feet down in this corner though <laughs> i've got to admit because i do like to stretch out like a starfish now you'll notice these windows each side of my bed as well these windows are made by leisure vehicle windows direct um, and they are fantastic they've got built-in fly screens or bug nets and you go so you can open them and you've got the bug net you can also open the bug net if you have to like if you want to stick your head out or your feet even <laughs> not the one I don't think but I highly recommend them with these windows open and my ceiling fan on I get such a lovely cool breeze it's so airy in here it's unbelievable 
it's definitely this is definitely the best van I've built so far I absolutely love this bed and it goes right up to the back door so in the summer hopefully <laughs> when, when everything turns to normal whatever normal is I can open my back doors and I can lay in my bed and look at a nice scenery like one of those pictures you often see on Instagram except I won't be wearing a bikini now you may have noticed these lovely curtains these curtains were custom made specifically for my van by Carlo Carlo is an upholstery expert and he made these curtains for me as a gift thank you Carlo I absolutely love them I'll put a link to that video up here and like I was saying above the bed I have this lovely Fiamma turbo vent with blinds and it works really well I'll put a link I'll put a link to that video up there now you'll notice at the back of the bed I've got two spotlights well I've decided that's a bit of an overkill I don't need both of those they are really bright and I've got this big bright light up here as well I've actually turned it off because if I turn it on it will just be, it'd be just too bright to, to, to film um, so I'm going to remove this one I'm going to take this spotlight out and replace it with a 12 volt socket so that I can plug my shower into there when I finally get around to fitting the shower at the back of the van and that light I will probably move to up under here and have it so that I can point it at the cooker or my sink not that I need to I don't think but yeah maybe I'll move it under here maybe I won't maybe I'll put it this side and have it pointing down there towards my fire Ah, oh, my fire. Let me show you my log burner, the piece de la resistance of this van. This log burner I absolutely love, just as much as I love my bed. <laughs> I'll just turn you around and show you my log burner. So here is my Cubic Mini Wood Stove. This stove is made in Canada by a company called Cubic Mini Wood Stoves. And I've got to say, it is brilliant. It really is. <laughs> it's amazing. It's probably one of the most extravagant things I've put in this van. Certainly not the cheapest stove on the market. Well, by the time you pay the tax and everything, the import, yeah, delivery and tax, it works out a little bit expensive, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion. Definitely worth it. It is fantastic. It's a proper mini stove. It's even got a secondary burn chamber, so it gives off very little smoke as well, and that's controlled by this lever here. You've got an actual burn control lever here. I mean, it is literally a mini wood stove. It even has fire bricks inside. So despite only being able to burn logs of this sort of size, I mean, this isn't a log, it's an off cut. But despite that, because it's got fire bricks in it, if you fill, I'll get about four of these in there, maybe five of it five of them at a squeeze and it will last literally five hours and because of the fire bricks it will probably give off heat for at least six hours so yeah plenty to keep you going all night you can easily keep this going all night and it burns so cleanly I mean I'd use this for a good couple of months and I didn't clean it out once the ash in the bottom just kind of disappears where it goes nobody knows <laughs> I've still got to clean the flue out actually I've just got a brush to clean it out so uh, yeah looking forward to trying that out well I'll put a, a link to the videos of me installing this wood stove up here I'll do a whole playlist I think yeah to anyone that's interested now one other thing I will say while I'm on the subject of this stove if you are thinking about buying one of these stoves do buy the whole thing everything you need don't make the mistake that I made I brought the stove and then I brought the flue and then I brought the insulated flue all separately and it worked out quite expensive with delivery and import tax if you buy the whole thing in one go it definitely works out a lot cheaper so yeah link in the description to where you can buy one of these stoves now you're probably wondering where's the fridge well the fridge is going to go underneath my wood burner I haven't got a fridge just yet but this whole compartment is exactly the right size for a Dometic 12 volt compressor fridge but I have got a Waco cool box it slides out from there and there you go inside there I've got milk and that is it that's all I've got in there and some water <laughs> that's pretty much it so the question I ask myself is do I really need to spend 500 pounds on a compressor fridge so we'll just see how we go on that one shall we before I go and spend 500 pounds on a compressor fridge I'll see how I get on with that one now above my stove you'll notice I've got this lovely overhead locker as well and this is simply a shelf 
above my cab and this towel by the way this towel rail <laughs> it may look like a towel rail but it was actually originally the handrail from the back doors when this van was very first built it's the original handrail that you would use to step into the back of the van i took it off and i thought that would be handy up there i can use that as a towel rail so that's what i use it for also i can hang other garments up there when my log burner's burning to dry them off like if i've got a wet coat or something like that i can use a coat hanger to hang it and it's just a really handy place to have a hanger <laughs> i guess now this overhead locker i will be boxing this in i will be putting doors across here eventually it's just one of those jobs that i haven't got around to doing yet but i will be doing that i'll be boxing this all in because it's amazing how much heat does come up through there from the cab because the cab gets hot heat rises and it does get hot so i will be putting doors across there eventually <laughs> Now underneath my seating area is my ring DC to DC charge controller. This is also an MPTT solar controller. It's an all-in-one unit, absolutely fantastic. Now the other end underneath my seat is my nighttime diesel heater. This was just a temporary fix. It's only there because I built this van during the winter months and I put it there temporarily just to keep me warm whilst I was building the van but now summer is here and I've got my stove fitted anyway I shall be removing this and putting it underneath my van and then once I've done that I can then block this whole area off and this will become one huge storage area then now I know a lot of people struggle when it comes to making overhead lockers so I designed and built these lockers in such a way that it's really easy to follow and I'll put a link to that video up here and thank you to everyone that complimented me on my overhead lockers. Now this side they all open upwards as you probably noticed. This one's a magnetised, this one's got a lock on it. Now this side it opens the other way and the reason for this is there's a mirror here so in the morning i can sort myself out and make myself look all pretty also in this locker the most important thing of all in the van is my coffee this is the coffee locker you have various flavors of coffee are stored in this locker and uh, for good reason because it's convenient for when i make my coffee in the morning well I do hope you enjoyed this van tour and if you did please do give me the thumbs up or even consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because I've still got plenty more things to do in this van and that's something you really don't want to miss. Thanks for watching, ta-da for now. Now whilst, <laughs> now whilst, 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 so here's a better view. No. Follow the arrow on the display. Oh, thank you. These are my wellies for when I go treasure hunting, some warehouses and all that sort of malarkey. I built this van on a driveway in the winter time as well. Hello, my name's Mel, welcome to my world. And this, no, that's wrong.